Absolutely beautiful. And if there's not a dry eye in the place, I wouldn't be surprised. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. Praise the Lord. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Glory to you, Lord. Peace on earth and mercy mild.
Praise the Lord, for our Savior has come. Praise the Lord, each and every one. Now please join me in the singing of Good Christian Men Rejoice, number 125 in your hymnals. only a few days after the Christmas celebration and we are exhausted. People have come and gone, gatherings are winding down, we're being reminded of the normalcy of life returning to us. We don't want to go there yet, we want to linger in the warmth of the season. Forgive us we don't seem to feel your warmth and our loves all the time. Forgive us when we assign warm only to Christmas and then to Easter and seem to dwell on the mundane of the, the mundane of the rest of the time. Give us courage to live as people of the light and those who find your comforting, encouraging presence in our lives at all times. Strengthen us for the joyful service in your name. Amen. Now, if you please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. For we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That'll be a call to our confession. Lord, we confess our sins right now, those that we are aware of and those that we are not aware of. Lord, you know that we desire to do right, but sometimes, Lord, we fall short of the mark. Lord, you know that we are imperfect creatures. We thank you for your forgiveness and for what your son did for us when he came into this world. Bless us now and help us to live our, for you now more than ever. Amen. People of God, feel the presence of God right now in this place, warming your hearts, forgiving your fears and strife, preparing, preparing you for joyful service in the name of Jesus Christ. You are beloved and forgiven. 
Amen. And join us with the glory of Patry. remain standing and sing Go Tell It on the Mountain, hymn number 488. time in the service when we share our joys and concerns. Do we have any joys and concerns to be shared this morning? Linda? Absolutely. We had a beautiful holiday season and we hope that everyone travels safely to their homes. Anyone else? Uh, I have a prayer of uh, concern uh, for Paulette having surgery, uh, hopefully on Tuesday, uh, for her rotator cuff her shoulder. We'll be thinking of her on Tuesday. Hope it goes well, George. Oh, up in the balcony, Emily. My aunt will be getting surgery tomorrow, so we are also praying for her. Prayers for your aunt, who's also having surgery tomorrow. We'll be thinking of her. What's her name? Sophia. Sophia. Prayers for Sophia. Anybody else? Linda? Uh, sorry for Emily. Oh, sorry, George. So if you didn't hear, thanks for Emily and everyone involved in um, our new music I'll program. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job, Linda and Emily, this morning. It takes a lot of courage to do that. It was beautiful. Joanne? I'd just like to remember um, everyone who has COVID currently, especially those who couldn't be with family during the holiday. Absolutely. And we know Dave and Jody Dixon are among those. So, Jeff? Oh, Jack. 
Oh gosh, I hope they I hope he feels better. Oh my goodness. And George? Uh, yeah, I do have another one. Uh, today would have been Bob's 39th anniversary. Oh, Bob, happy anniversary. All right, so if we could light the steeple in memory of Carol today, that would be awesome. And we never forget Carol. She was such a big part of our church and a beautiful person. I'd also like to offer prayers for the men and women in our military who can't be with their families over Christmas um, and who do make the ultimate sacrifice. Keep them in our prayers. Um, and now I'd like to offer a prayer. Heavenly Father, life after Christmas Day feels different to each of us. For some, this was the best Christmas ever. But for others, it was a difficult day of dashed hopes or loneliness, or perhaps the first Christmas with an empty chair where a loved one used to sit. My prayer for today is for all of us, no matter what yesterday was like. For even our best days are in need of God's word, and none of our worst days are beyond the reach of his love. God, we always have more of your grace than we're aware of, and we need more than we realize. So enable us to glorify and praise you in every season and situation in life. In Jesus' faithful and loving name, amen. And now let us present with joy our offerings of commitment and support for the work of Christ's church. The morning offering will now be given. Let's read the prayer of dedication together. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to sow a seed into your kingdom this morning. Bless those that gave and those that did not have to give. Let this, our gift, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you know we can never match what you gave to us 2,000 years ago with the greatest gift of all, the gift of your son. 
So let this, our humble offering, please you, our Lord. Good morning. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2, and is found on the back of your bulletin. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. May God add his blessing to our understanding of these words from the Holy Scripture. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Especially as I try to give the day after Christmas sermon. <laughs> so I'm going to preface this by saying those of you who know me know that I can take a family recipe that's 100 years old and tweak it just a little bit to make it even better than it was 100 years ago. I can take a masterpiece that was written by Cynthia Dobrinsky on the bells and say, gee, if we just change this ending and add a few more notes, it'll be perfect. So I found a sermon online called The Day After Christmas. It was written by Stephen Sheen, but I really felt I had to tweak it just a little bit to make it perfect. So these are not my original words, just my embellished um, words and thoughts. So I hope you enjoy it. Christmas is great, but what do you do after the presents have been opened and the cookies have been eaten? The day after Christmas is a time for pondering, praising, and proclaiming. And that's what today's message is about. Most families start putting up decorations right after Thanksgiving. For the kids, it's all about Christmas morning and opening presents, visiting family, and lots of food. And then it's over. At the end of the day, when all the gifts have been opened and there's nothing under the tree, then Christmas is over. For many, it's anticlimactic. However, what comes after Christmas is perhaps the most important part about it. The day after Christmas is important for so many reasons. Luke 2, verses 17 through 20 reads, When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So let me ask you a question. When the presents have all been opened and the decorations start getting put away, what will you do the day after Christmas? Well, I'm glad you're all here, <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> This passage says that there are three ways that we are to respond to Christmas. Number one, pondering. After Christmas is a good time to reflect on what you have just seen and heard. How many times did you hear the Christmas story? I'm sure most of you could come up here today and recite the story practically from memory. So that familiarity doesn't breed contempt the first way to respond to Christmas to the Christmas message is to make it fresh in your heart by pondering it in a new way. Let me tell you this story. A chauffeur had driven a chemistry professor to dozens of speaking engagements. He'd heard the same canned speech scores of times. On the way to his next engagement, the chauffeur said, my professor, I believe I could give your speech myself. I've heard it so often, the professor, the professor responded, I'll bet you $50, you can't, you're on, said the chauffeur. So they stopped the car, the two exchanged clothes, 
They went to the banquet and the chauffeur, dressed in a tuxedo, sat at the head table and was introduced. He stood up and gave the speech exactly as he had heard it so many times before. There was a standing ovation when he was finished. Then the MC got up and said, you know, we're so fortunate to have such a fine resource with us tonight. And since we have a little extra time, let's have some questions and answers. Well, the first question was asked and the chauffeur stood there dumbfounded, clearing his throat nervously. Finally, with a flash of insight, he said, well, you know, that's just about the dumbest question I've ever heard. In fact, it's so dumb, I bet even my chauffeur could answer that question. <laughs> if you think about it, some Christian tradition, some Christmas traditions are very strange. The greeting on one Christmas card goes like this. Christmas is just plain weird. What other time of year do you sit around staring at a dead tree in your living room and eat candy out of your socks? There are things about the Christmas story that are also pretty strange. A virgin teenager gets pregnant, visits by angels, God's child born in a stable. It's almost too incredible to believe. You've heard this story so many times, but have you really stopped to think about it? Another story. There was a wealthy European family that decided to have their newborn baby dedicated in their enormous mansion. Dozens of guests were invited to celebrate the elaborate affair and they all arrived dressed elegantly. After leaving their coats on a bed in an upstairs guest room, they were entertained royally. Soon the time came for the main purpose of their gathering, the infant's christening. But where was the baby? No one seemed to know. Everyone searched frantically for the baby. Then someone recalled having seen him asleep on one of the beds. Oh, the baby was on a bed all right, buried beneath a pile of coats and jackets and furs. The object of that day's celebration had been forgotten, neglected, and nearly smothered. The baby whose birthday we celebrate at Christmas is easily hidden beneath the piles of traditions of the season. We need to enter every Advent season asking, where is the baby? C.S. Lewis said, we don't need to be told new ideas so much as we need to be reminded of old truths. This Christmas, let's remember the true meaning of Christmas. God gave himself for us. He was born as one of us so that each of us might be born again into the family of God. That baby born in Bethlehem 2000 years ago is the savior of us all. Number two, praising. The shepherds had witnessed the world's greatest birth announcement. I'm sure you've heard and read those words many times, but let me just highlight one word. And that word is you. Luke 2 verses 10 through 12. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The angel's message to the shepherds was that Jesus is your savior, your king, your Christ, your gift, straight from God, just for you. Sometimes we focus on the fact that God so loved the world that we forgot God so loved you that he gave his only son. The fact that Jesus came for you means that you need to respond to his incredible gift. What will you do with Jesus? How will you personally respond? Don't look at the person sitting beside you. God's gift is for you. And you have to determine how you will respond. And you can respond 
by praising him. Someone once said, we've become a generation of people who worship our work, work at our play, and play at our worship. Leonard Sweet wrote, our pews are occupied by people who want to be moved, but, don't, but who don't want to move. We crave the experience of worship, but don't want to work towards it. But worship is what we were created for. God is most glorified in us when we worship him. Number three, proclaiming. The third way we respond to the gift of Christ is by proclaiming him. Treasuring Christ is something we do, not by keeping him to ourselves, but by making him known to the world. Luigi Teresio was found dead one morning with hardly a comfort in his home, but with 246 exquisite violins, which he had been collecting all his life, crammed into an attic, the best in the bottom drawer of an old rickety bureau. In his very devotion to the violin, he had robbed the world of all that music, all the time he treasured them. Others before him had done the same, so that when the greatest of his collection, a Stradivarius, was first played, it had had 147 speechless years. Yet how many of Christ's people are like old Teresio. In our very love of the church, we fail to give the glad tidings to the world. In our zeal for the truth, we forget to publish it. When will we learn that the good news needs not just to be cherished, but to be told? All people need to hear it. Just like the shepherds who went away that first Christmas to tell everyone they met, there are so many who have yet to come and see Jesus. Like the angels who interrupted the shepherd's sleep, the world today needs the light of Christ to come and wake us up from our sleep and point us to the one who can truly save. Isaiah 9, chapter, verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So on this day after Christmas, take time to ponder, praise, and proclaim, the Lord our Savior is born, Merry Day After Christmas. And now please stand as we sing the brightest and best of the sons of the morning, 126 in your hymnal. Oh, mm -hmm. 
May the birth of Jesus be renewed in our lives. May the spirit of Jesus guide our words and thoughts. May the life of Jesus inspire us to follow in the way of hope. Amen. Peace be with you all. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>